everybody welcome back it's Tammy uh, and all right so what are we doing today um, I am going to get I'm I've got two more uh, junk journals basically uh, decorated except for I haven't finished doing the fun stuff on the ends um, but what I want to do today is get the covers made for these and I decided I wanted to go ahead and do kind of a soft cover so um, I've got a couple of uh, fabrics here and um, I'll kind of walk you through how I tend to do this um, sometimes I use these file folders sometimes I use um, I've had the, I don't know if you've ever had like a day planner that's kind of got like, um, I don't want to say vinyl, it's kind of a plasticky cover that's kind of a little bit bendy. <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of hard to describe what it is, but I've, I've had some of those and I've used those in the past too. Um, I think they all work really well. Uh, all right. So, but before I get started on that. Um, I'm going to share this. Uh, if you're watching this before you watch the reveal of this junk journal, uh, this is a brand new, freshly made junk journal that I will be posting um, on my Etsy shop later today. So, if that's interesting to you, keep an eye out because this is the last one that I'm going to do that has a marble cover like this for this year. So, or at least for a fall themed one. Um, and actually, this one's not overly fall. I guess it kind of is. Um, but anyway, I will have that video later today. Um, and all right. So I'm going to move this over here and move these over here. My desk right now is an absolute nightmare. Um, I would pan. <laughs> Well, maybe I will. No, I don't. I don't want to. I'll take a picture of it and put it on Instagram. How's that sound? <laughs> the, it, honestly, this kind of stuff, it stresses me out. I can't, I can't handle it. Um, and then I'm not creative. <laughs> so um, I'll be hopefully cleaning this up today too, because I can't, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put the fabric to the side because I don't need that quite yet. And first what I'm going to do is, so here we've got six signatures. I had originally thought I wanted to do one uh, journal with all six of these, but then I thought, no, not everyone wants to have this many signatures dedicated to fall. Um, and, uh, that would be an awfully big spine and I just didn't really want to do that. So I decided to go ahead and split these into t two different journals, um, three signatures each. So what I've got here is, uh, these were cut down from another project that I ended up not using, um, to very different sizes, obviously. Um, I have a feeling this size is going to be more close to the right size. So um, what I usually do is I make all my signatures first and then I make this cover around that. So based off the size of the signatures. Um, I just find it's a little easier to do that uh, when you're making your own cover, that is. Um, if you're using an existing uh, book, cover like this one like this gorgeous one that's going to be available very soon today um <laughs> doing a little plug <laughs> um then I you know obviously I will do it that way but all right I'm going to stop rambling okay so what I've got here is I'm going to use these uh, ridges um bendy lines uh that are already in the file folder and I kind of want to see what I like to do is uh, stand my signatures up like this, and I'm looking on my um, ruler mat here and just kind of roughly measuring how wide they are. So um, the, these are about three quarters of an inch wide. And wide. Uh, so let me me measure this one, I'm guessing it's about the same, yeah. So these are both gonna be about three quarters of an inch wide in width, which I don't want it to be three. I don't want the spine to be three quarters 
of an inch wide because then there's not going to be any room to grow. So I'm going to try and get the spine an inch wide. I like to always kind of give myself another extra quarter of an inch at least. So, okay, so it looks like these lines here are exactly three quarters of an inch, which is not what I was hoping for. Um, <laughs> okay. And I noticed when I put this inside here, you stay put. Uh, when I put this inside here, it was just barely going to reach around. And I don't want to cut off any more on this side. Hmm. Otherwise, this would be the perfect size. So, actually, I think it'll be okay. I think what I'll do is add a little bit of um, width over here by putting here. So I've got some of these left over. I think I might just add some uh, extra width over here on the right side. And um, that's going to work fine because I'll be uh, decorating the covers anyway. So, all right. I think that'll be okay. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make another line here. These are, core. I don't know how well you can see this, but um, maybe let me zoom in. I don't know if that helped. I don't think that helped. <laughs> Are you even straight? Okay. <sighs> All right. Well, basically what we have is each quarter of an inch, there's a line. And so I just want to add one more um, there at the end. Need to get my... My tool. Where is my little tool? Haven't used it in a while. It's hiding all the way in the back. Oh, here we go. Okay, gonna get this and then my ruler. And we're just gonna quickly score that. Okay, and then I'm gonna use the bigger tip. So if you have one of these, you know that one tip is larger, one ball is larger than the other, and I'm gonna use the larger one of the two and score that on the line there. And what I'm doing is making it easier to fold in a straight line to create my spine. So that's perfect. Now, there we go. Folding that over and <laughs> awesome. I didn't think of that. Okay, so yeah, I really will have to add more to the side here. Hmm, that could be kind of neat actually if I did something with that little notch. <laughs> Um, all right, but I want to do this for both of these because this is a little bit flimsy. Uh, so I like to double these up and um, glue them together. And then I will put the fabric over the top of them. So I'm going to do the exact same thing with this. Once again, just line this up top and bottom, vertically and horizontally. Want it to be as accurate as possible. We don't want any crooked lines. So, how has everybody been? Um, I know I haven't been around as much as I wanted to be this last week. I feel like I owe everyone. I don't know if you've been wondering about my cat, Bella. Um, it's been kind of a, a rocky road a little bit with her. Um, she's good right now, um, 
but last week she was kind of getting so for anyone who doesn't know um, my cat Bella had been having um, some health things going on we I had taken her into the vet and uh, the vet and we we both thought that it was kind of some hairball issues she was having and so kind of treated her for that well Lo and behold, it wasn't hairballs really at all. Um, she ended up uh, having pancreatitis, acute pancreatitis, which is worse. And um, that kind of caused not eating and a lot of vomiting. And um, poor girl, she, I just about lost her at least twice. Um, which, so anyway, all of that, the not eating and everything led to um, fatty liver which I don't, I don't know a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, it was a little bit touch and go there. Long story short, uh, we ended up putting a feeding tube in her and she had the feeding tube for gosh, at least two weeks, a little over two weeks. And, um, last week, uh, it was kind of starting, I think to really just bother her and, um, I think both her and I were both over the fact that she had this feeding tube in her. Um, so, uh, when I got home on Wednesday evening, she, to move around at all, uh, she was just really retching and gagging and I, it was obviously something was bothering her. She was kind of pawing at her face, um, and her mouth and everything and of course by the time I had gotten home the vet was already closed and I of course was really scared um called the emergency vet and they offered to do x-rays and stuff and I was like well I don't know that that's really gonna solve much but basically they wanted to see if the feeding tube had moved or is in the wrong place or something. I looked in her throat and I didn't see anything. Anyway, uh, when she wasn't moving around, seemed to be okay. So I decided uh, in the end, I didn't want to spend a fortune and um, keep, I just kept her as still as I possibly could um, all evening and um, took her back to the, my, her regular vet, my vet my regular vet the next morning um she seemed to be a lot better in the morning she had gotten up and eaten on her own that was the, that's been the main thing is she needs to eat um food on her own and um that you know the thing that caused the fatty liver was the not eating enough and so uh She's gotten a lot of, she's been a little bit spoiled actually with her food. I've never spoiled her. I've never given her treat, you know, really I've never given her treats her entire life. She's nine and a half right now. Um, that's how old she is. So anyway, uh, talked to the vet that day about, you know, I knew it was going to be another rough day. Um, might have to make a bad, a, a tough decision. <sighs> Just regarding her life um, I don't want her to continuously be you know struggling and suffering you know this she's not been well and I can tell uh, she's just not as happy as she has been so anyway um, basically the vet and I decided that it's time to pull the tube it's obviously not um, it's been it's more of a hurt than a help right now and so we pulled the tube out and basically, I'm, I said, I'm just going to have to say a prayer and hopefully she'll come through it and eat on her own because I could not, I can't afford to put it back in. Um, and I kind of just decided that, um, if she couldn't handle it, um, and if she get gets sick again, um, that's kind of, I don't know, I'll, I'll have to figure that out, I guess, um, if that happens, but, uh, so I'm still emotional. I'm sorry. I just, uh, it's been a lot. <laughs> um, but so I'm happy to report though, um, that she has been absolutely fantastic. She's been eating great. Um, 
I really haven't had any issues as far as that goes. So um, I'm really hopeful that she'll pull through, but obviously it's not 100% yet um, that she will. Uh, I just, I'm really hopeful that it'll be okay. So anyway, that was that. And then on top of all of this, <laughs> I came home on Thursday night. I swear to gosh, you guys, like, I'm ready for the drama to be done in my life. I can't, I can't take anymore. <laughs> um, so I got home from work Thursday night and my internet was out. <laughs> I had just switched over um, from Cox Internet to CenturyLink and, um, like, literally not, I haven't even gotten my bill. They don't, I've, since found that they don't even have my, um, okay. So what I'm going to do here, sorry, back to what we're working on. I'm going to move this up so you can see a little bit better. Um, I'm going to cut off half, looks like two quarters of an inch, which is half an inch. Yeah. Um, yep. I'm going to cut off half an inch on the right side uh, of this. So, and this is still kind of drying. I don't want to mess with that. So I'm going to do this carefully. Grab my X-Acto knife. I'm going to line this back up again. I don't know how well can you see. Okay, good enough. Um, so yeah, so it's just been kind of like, what else is going to happen? <laughs> um, you know, obviously not having the internet is not the end of the world. I totally get that. Um, but my entire, everything is connected to the internet. Uh, my TV, I only have one antenna, um, for my TV to get local programming and that's in the basement. I'm really never in the basement other than when I want to watch um, a movie or something because that's where I have my big screen TV. Um, so, you know, it's just kind of a pain. <laughs> just kind of a pain in the butt. Um, called CenturyLink and of course you can't get a hold of anybody because, you know, that's their business model, I think. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, sorry for anybody who works at CenturyLink. Okay, so this is now a half an inch too short, and so I think I'm going to cut this at three quarters of an inch, so I have an, a quarter, well, maybe I'll just cut it at an inch, um, so I have an inch of stuff to work with there. Um, no, I don't want that. Here, I'm going to do this because it'll be easier. Okay. So, is this the right length? That's what I need to know. What is the length, the height of this? Um, so anyway, I spent all evening trying to get a hold of somebody at CenturyLink to figure out what happened. And what happened was they came to uh, bury the cable in my backyard because it was just temporarily connected and the reason I know this is because now that now that someone has come out it's been fixed oh man that's not okay that's all right find something else maybe use these two there we go um so, meanwhile, I haven't been able to post any videos, really. Um, all my data on my phone is done for the month. <laughs> like, seriously. It's such a pain in the butt. Um, it's just a pain in the butt. And it wouldn't have been such a pain if, I, if it had happened and they could have come out um, during the week. What am I doing? I still need this. Um, but you know, of course it happened on the weekend and <laughs> it's like, seriously. Um, but in the end it's fixed now. So I think maybe life can go back to normal. Hopefully 
if Bella can start feeling better and we can put all this craziness behind us. <laughs> all right, so I'm cutting these to be one inch by nine inches high so that they will match my um, right side of my cover. And I'm going to glue these together as well. And then I'm going to glue them to the cover. Oh, ooh, I just had an idea. I'm going to glue one on the front and one on the back side so that uh, it won't be too bulky on the front side. Look at me being all smart and stuff. All right, so I hope you've all been good. Um, I didn't mean to be gone <laughs> for so long. Um, it's just kind of been one of those. It's just life, I guess. Sometimes it just kind of comes up and bites you in the butt. All right, so normally I wouldn't be this weird about gluing something, but I'm going to glue. I know half of this is um, going to be open. So I'm going to glue this first one to only one half. So it'll uh, stick to the front side. And then the other one, I'll glue the whole thing. But um, this will be hopefully a little less messy by doing it this way. Um, so, but, uh, in the meantime, though, I feel like I've done pretty well with getting um, journals made and posted and actually made a few sales. Thank you um, to the folks who purchased. Um, I hope you, you'll be getting your new journals soon, and I hope that you really enjoy them. Um, I've been really having a good time doing these fall journals, to be honest. It's one of my favorite times of the year. And um, it's really been kind of a retreat for me, actually, the last couple weeks. So, okay, so let me set this over here. I'm going to put my washi on top so it won't be in the way. And we will. Whoops. That's the next thing I have to do. I don't know how well you can see it, but my cutting board, my cutting mat is completely dirty, full of glue. <laughs> like I really seriously need to uh, clean my craft room and my entire upstairs right now. Um, this morning while I was uh, waiting for the service guy to come and fix my internet, um, meanwhile, I've still had, so if you haven't been following me for a while, um, you might not know this, but my mom is also in the process of kind of moving and, um, she had an estate sale and had a lot of, uh, antique furniture and stuff that she wanted to sell. Um, and not everything was sold. So, uh, I w ended up taking a secretary that she had, an antique secretary, um, chest of drawers that <laughs> found its way into my living room. And then with everything that's been going on, it just kind of stayed there. Uh, and so I was kind of tired of walking around it and looking at it. So I decided I'm going to clean my bedroom and move the stuff out of the way. I think I'm going to, I wonder if I should do the, I think I'll make this the front and this the back, and then I will attach the closure to the back side only and wrap it around like this. And that will kind of help explain why <laughs> this is here um, when you're feeling it. Um, so anyway, uh, as I was waiting for the 
person to come this morning. Uh, I decided to go ahead and take care of some of that stuff that has been bugging me too. And so I'm a little tired right now. <laughs> it's just been going and going since I woke up this morning, uh, which is good. I mean, that's what I like to do on the weekends is kind of take care of that kind of stuff. So, all right. That's a pretty darn good fit, I would say. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm going to not mess around with this too much more because I want the glue to dry and I don't want to uh, make it move or anything. And in the meantime, uh, I think I want to... I think I want to put this on the outside and the other on the inside. So what I need to do is measure, what do we got going on here? The easiest way is to lay it flat. And I like to have at least an inch, probably, yeah, at least an inch around the uh, perimeter. So we need... Let me grab my ruler again. All right, so there's 11 inches, so 12 and a half. So we need to add two inches to that. So 14 and a half inches wide by, and that's nine inches high, so 11. So 14 and a half by 11 is the uh, width that we, the size of outside fabric that we need. So. Let me unravel this. Um, I just recently picked this up from Joanne Fabrics. Um, our Joanne Fabrics is currently going through a major renovation. They um, bought the empty store next to them that used to be a Stein Mart. And um, they're basically doubling in size. So uh, went in there last, when was that, last week? Just to get some more Fabri-Tac, you know, because whenever they have a coupon, you got to take advantage of it. Um, and notice that a whole bunch of their fabric was on clearance. So this fabric I actually got for next to nothing. I think it was a buck and, buck and a half a yard or something. Super cheap. So when, when you see that, <laughs> you take advantage of it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just rip this entire piece of this, and that'll be easier to work with. I don't normally rip two pieces like that, but... All right, I'm going to put this aside, and we will have plenty of fabric to use, maybe for some fall journals for next year or something else. But I saw this and I was like, well, I normally wouldn't buy this, but I knew I had been making these fall journals and I thought, whoa, it's kind of perfect um, pattern and colors. So decided to pick that up. All right, move that out of the way. Now we have a more manageable piece to work with here. So, I kind of feel like normally I would be more conservative about the amount of fabric that I use, but I know that I'm really not going to use this for anything else. So I want the front to be a little bit more padded. So I'm going to go ahead and keep this doubled up like this and um, use two pieces for the front side um, on each of them. So. Fortunately, we have a nice line already made, so I'm going to cut right where this line is and rip right on that. And that should be ready for both journals. Get rid of all this fraying. Perfect. All right. Now this is kind of trying to come apart, so I think I'll use this one first and um, save the second one for the other journal. I'm only going to film one of these because it's going to be the same process for both and you don't want to sit and watch me do this for two hours. <laughs> uh, hopefully.
hopefully it doesn't take that long, but sometimes it does. <laughs> so, okay. Let's set this aside. Move the glue out of the way. And I want to look and see which, if there's any wrinkles or anything that I need to kind of think about. Oh my God, my desk is such a mess. I can't even stand it. Okay. Um, all right. So let's see if there's any wrinkles I need to think about. I'm going to lay this down perfect. This is going to be just the right size. I actually have way more over here than I need. So I'm going to trim it down just a little bit more. This is dry by now, so I don't need to worry too much anymore about messing that up. Okay, and we'll save this for future use. I might actually put some of it on the interior pages for tip-ins, maybe your hidden journaling spots or like tabs and stuff. I like to save this kind of stuff for that. Um, all right, so go ahead and I'm trying to think, I really probably should lightly glue these pieces together because if I don't, then they will bunch and I don't want that to happen. So. When you're using Fabri-Tac and you're going to do something like this, you need to have a very light hand um, because the glue will come through to the other side. So I'm very not not putting much on here at all, and I will smooth it out with my fingers. I'm just doing it enough to um, make sure that there's no like puckering or bubbles or anything like that. I want it to appear like there's only one piece of fabric here. So and I need to work a little quickly because this is probably already starting to dry. And the reason I'm smoothing it out with my fingers is because that will help it from not pooling and making, you know, like a drip spot. And um, what'll happen is it'll show through on the other side. And if that's the case, um, I can put that side on towards the inside of the file folder. You'll see what I mean when I get done here. Okay, so now I'm very carefully going to move that back down, smooth it out. And it's not fantastically held together, but it just needs to hold enough so that it doesn't move around a whole lot or create puckering. All right, I'm just gonna double check. Yeah, this is definitely gonna be the side that I put against the, the cover. I got glue all over my fingers. All right, this side looks way nicer. Okay, so now let's do the other half. Being very careful again not to create wrinkles or anything like that. Again, just very lightly adding some glue here. What I should do is this. I'm not try and do the entire thing. 
Let's do little bits at a time, Tam. That'll be easier. Does anybody else talk to themselves when they craft? <laughs> I do. <laughs> well, since I glued that side down, I'll go ahead and marry those two together and I'll get the rest here. Alright, so it's hot outside today. Well, this whole weekend. I don't know about you guys. Um, how is it the middle of September and it's still this hot? Although, come to think of it, uh, a couple weeks ago it was awfully nice out <laughs> for quite some time. So I don't think fall knows what's going on. <laughs> okay, perfect. I gotta get the glue off my finger. Put the cap back on. All right, now we can go ahead and I'm gonna flip this over because I decided this side is the side I don't wanna see. But I like that I doubled this up because it's thicker now and it'll work a lot better. Um, the front of the cover okay so that's not what I wanted there we go all right so I think what I'll do is I'm gonna add glue to this and then I will need to cut off the corners so that I can have mitered corners and make that all look nice but first I need it to stick to the um, cardboard or the file folder. Um, so one other reason why I like the decision I made to double up the fabric is I can be a little heavier handed now with the glue here because I know it's not going to show through as well um, because the fabric is doubled up. So it'll be more sturdy now. And my glue needs some acetone added to it because it's getting kind of gloopy. I'm going to smooth this out again though. Um, I found when using Fabri-Tac it's just easiest to, um, especially when you're putting it on fabric, uh, to smooth it out with your fingers um, because it really will show through the fabric if you're not careful. Sorry about that. My nose is running. But yeah, I need to go outside in this heat today and mow my yard because <laughs> I didn't get that done this week. Because I had all kinds of other things going on. And it's just going to be hot the next couple days, I hear. So I guess better now than tomorrow night. All right. Got a whole lot of glue going on. And quickly run my finger around the outside edges first. I want to make sure and get all of the outside edges covered. It's the most important because we don't want it coming away from the outside edge. And then I'll do the insides. And I really want the spine to be covered too. I don't want it to slip and slide quickly do this because I can tell it's kind of starting to dry on me and flip it over try and line it up as well as I can here perfect all right now I'm gonna flip it this way get the glue off my fingers quickly gotta work fast here and smooth smooth it out get rid of all of the lines and bumps and want to make sure it's on there secure. Okay. Looks good, guys. I'm liking it. 
All right, now I'm gonna flip it back over. I got some on the. Okay, looks really good. So I'm gonna grab my bigger scissors here to help me cut the corners. Yeah, that'll look really good. I like it a lot. Okay. Move this out of the way. Sorry. The way that my um, desk is positioned in my room, uh, it causes shadows because the sun's coming from this direction. So I, because my desk is so dirty, <laughs> I got a whole lot of stuff on it right now. Um, it's like, seriously, pile, pile. <laughs> ridiculous uh, is causing shadows <laughs> so okay and one more And I don't know if you noticed, but I did leave a little bit of space um, on each corner, just like that, so that we'll be able to cover that corner. Um, actually, did I even need to do that? Because I'm going to be pasting another piece uh, around. Hmm. Okay, so... Sorry, got got into my head there for a second. So what I'm thinking about right now is I've done covers typically where I leave a frayed edge all around the outside. And I kind of like that look. And that's actually easier to do because you don't have to miter the corners. You just leave this the way it is here and uh, put your inside fabric directly on top of that and then I'm going to go back around and sew around the outside edges a couple times. Um, so I'm trying to decide right now if I want to do a mitered corner or not. Um, well, how about this? Since I've already done this, I'll go ahead and do it on this one and then on the other one I will not. Well, do I want to? Oh, what do I want to do? Okay, so I'm trying to think about what the inside is going to look like. So I'm obviously not going to do mitered corners on the inside. So I'm trying to think of what that might kind of end up looking like. And um, I think what I'll end up doing is, yes, still go ahead and do this. Fold over these edges here. And then um, for my inside, pa my inside, um fabric. I'll just cut it so that it's a little bit shorter um, on the top and bottom like I would on any kind of book and I'll just leave the edges frayed at the top all, all around the edges. Um, I think that'll look good. So and actually what I could do too is um, use this on the inside here like a regular book and then my inside fabric could act as, maybe that's what I'll do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this look like an actual book. All right. Okay. So that's what I'll do. So now that we've talked through that, <laughs> go ahead and add some glue again to the, I always start from opposite sides and I'm going to go ahead and do, um, Actually, I should probably add glue this here. Um, because you want to create tight, make it tight, both this uh, vertically and horizontally. So I'm going to start with the vertical. And... Pull this over the top like this and hopefully not make a big old mess. Okay. I 
know it's not super pretty at the ends there, but that's okay because I'm going to come back and I'll be covering all this anyway with other fabric. So I'm going to just flip this over to make sure it looks good. All right. Um, I will still sew around the outside edges um, just because I want it to be really secure and not fall apart. Uh, but plus also because I just like the way it looks. So, all right, make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. Go ahead and add some glue. Oh, I've got glue all over me. I'm gonna add it into that corner too. I don't wanna leave that out. And I'm being a little more heavy handed on this one because I know it's going to be hidden. Um, so I don't need to worry too much about it showing through the fabric. Go ahead and add a little bit to here. I just don't want it to show on the very edge because that is where you would see it the most. All right. Awesome. So I'm making sure that this is pulled tight so we don't want any gaps. And it's looking pretty darn good. So at this point now, what I'm going to do is I've got this little corner hanging out right here. What I want to do is very carefully fold this and glue it so that it kind of tucks in there and then I'm going to fold this over the top of it. So I didn't show you that very well but <laughs> it's trickier than it probably needs to be. Sometimes I like to pull this little tool out again and use that to kind of help me guide it where it needs to go. Um, uh, otherwise, if you have fingernails, that usually helps a lot too. But getting a little dab of glue on there will kind of help help hold things in place for you too a little bit better. So there it goes. Use what little glue I had on the outside of my tip there. And pull that in. I'm going to do this on all four corners now. Okay, now it's not super clean, but it'll be okay. Stick a little bit of glue there, a little bit on top. Put that in. And there we go. All right, so now I need to add some glue here. Come on. And as I'm folding this over, I want to make sure that those little ends are tucked in the way that they should be. Just like that. This is where I get quiet because I need to concentrate. <laughs> this is like... You really need to practice that one. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say. It's one of those that kind of has eluded me <laughs> for 
for a long time. I'm finally just now getting better at doing that. <laughs> and to be honest with you, it just, it takes practice. You just got to practice it and do it enough times. Okay. This one's a little bigger, so I don't really like that, but actually I'm going to leave that. I don't know how I like that. Okay, I'm going to work quickly and just try and make it work. So you'll notice I'm not putting glue right up to the edge. And I'm doing that because when I roll the fabric over, I know that um, if I got too much glue there, it could potentially show up on the edge of the fabric. And um, if I just add enough glue here, that'll hold it in place just fine. So I don't need to have it super glued on the very edge there. All right, so we're gonna Tuck that little bad boy down on both sides. And I don't know if this one's gonna be as neat. <laughs> Very carefully roll it up. Actually, it turned out pretty well. Okay, I can live with that. Oh, I got a little bit of puckering happening. Basically what you want is, you don't want the edge of the, um, the edges to show through at all. So where's my, I think this is the back side. Yep. That's the front. Okay. So I'm going to take my ruler again and just redefine my front and back edge of my spine here because adding this bulk has since messed that up a little bit and what I could do and maybe should do actually is what happens is um, when you I don't know if you can really see that but see how it's kind of bulging up a little bit there what I probably should have done before I pulled the fabric over is do a slit on each side and then um, folded it up on each side uh, because it because it does do that so it'll be okay I'll, I'll kind of work with it enough to make it work work itself out but all right so at this point I kind of need to decide do I want to add any decorations to the front or the back, or do I like that it's just this um, material? Um, I can tell that this is kind of pulling a little bit, so I'm just gonna kind of work with this a little bit, kind of help it a little bit out. I don't want it to be too tight. It's not going to be stiff like a regular cover would be, um, but I also don't want it to be super warped and funny looking either. So I'm just kind of working this, working this out and helping it to know what to do. I've got a little weird bend going on there. Okay, I think what I want to do is maybe add just a cover plate there and call it a day. So let me see what I have handy. I've got so much stuff on my desk. I'm guessing I probably already have something <laughs> sitting here. Um, let's see. Violets. Oh, you know what? I think I probably do. We got some hodgepodge hardware from Stampin' Up. I got this from a garage sale. Okay, so let's 
see. I'm thinking maybe one of these. Move that out of the way. Let's see what this will look like. Yeah, I'll do that. And then um, what I like to do is put some paper behind that or some other um, fabric just to kind of highlight it a little bit um, to help it stand out. So now I'm just looking to see what I got sitting here and something like this might be kind of perfect. So yeah, that's cool. Um, I want some more though. I want, I want more. I want more. <laughs> it's not enough. Oh, let's see. This one's cool too. Maybe we do do a little bit of this on there too. Whoops. Just knocked out my glue. All right. So I'm going to kind of do a little bit of patchwork kind of look here just to see kind of what it'll look like. Kind of mess around with that a little bit. Mm. I like it, but it needs more. I need more! Okay, so I had a little piece sitting over here of some of this coffee dyed, yes, this is what I want. Some of this coffee dyed tracing paper. I'm gonna put that behind. Okay, building up the layers. And we've got a little bit of this paper. that okay so I think what I'll do is kind of rip this so that it uh, is ooh you know what else you know what else I have um, I want to add more color this this is what I want okay so I still like this though so I'm going to just rip off a bit of this and do some haphazard ripping here. Around three edges and then I'm going to hide maybe that behind there. Um, another thing I could have done is I have some of this, which is great to add on the back side. Ooh, maybe that's what I'll do too. Okay, we're just kind of doing a little bit of collaging here in layers. I just want it to look kind of not, not per well, obviously not perfect, but um, I just want it to look like It was put together just with whatever was ha handy, you know, kind of like folk, folk art kind of. Okay, so I need to measure sort of around this and cut it. I don't really need this much of it, but I just need the general size. And then I'll kind of mess with this a little bit more. I don't know why I'm still folding this. It's not like it. <laughs> Ugh. My perfectionism gets away with me sometimes. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to rough this up a little bit. And by that, I mean literally just start pulling at it because it's too perfect. 
and I just want it to be more just texture behind there and it's not gonna look perfect by any means but that's exactly what I'm going for okay so I can deal with those later. With my smaller scissors. All right, so let me go ahead and put this back down. Yes, this is what I wanted. Okay. And this needs to be a little straighter. And this can kind of peek out from below and we had a little bit of a patch over here here this is what it needs I'm gonna get a little bit rougher with it <laughs> okay there we go, that's a little better. All right, put that back down. And I'm gonna put this, I think, like that. Or do I like it better vertical? Hmm, that's kind of weird looking. Is it too big? What's wrong with that? Why don't I like it? Oh, here we go. This is what I want. Here we go. All right. I'm going to set that there for a minute and see how I feel about it. And then tuck this back in here. Ooh, yes. This is looking good. Okay. So this is going to go in there, but I want this to be what you would write on. So, but I want it to be kind of roughly torn and still showing through sort of on the outside. So if this isn't quite the right size, I have more, but... I just really just need it to be wide enough and this is kind of perfect so it will be like that okay now making a mental picture <laughs> because now I need to glue all this down and then I'll come back and actually I'll glue each piece and sew each piece so why don't I pause for a second and I'll come back after I have got all that done. All right. Okay, so basically what I did was I glued this piece of paper and that piece of paper down, just tacked it down, and then sewed around each one. Uh, then I glued the background fringy stuff with this piece of fabric here. Uh, tack that down and glued, uh, glued around it, uh, sewed around it. Then I tacked this little piece of lace down and sewed that. Then I tacked this piece down and I sewed around that. And now we are ready to kind of line up where we want this nameplate to go. And that looks about right, I think, to me. So I'm going to carefully... Okay, poke my holes, and I have the doohickey bobbers sitting right here. 
Okay, so I'm going to do this one first. Sorry for my fingernails. Okay, so um, you might be wondering why. Why didn't I put the inside stuff in? This is why. I didn't want all of this showing on the inside. So by doing all this first, I'm able to avoid um, having it show through. Um, and then you saw me poke barely, um, but then not all the way through. And then I went over here and I did that because I can just barely see uh, the little pin prick there, which now I know that needs to be in the center of my little hole and it'll be lined up well. Whoop, get in there. Maybe. <laughs> I'm gonna make the hole a little bigger. Come on. Where'd you go? There. What time is it? I'm getting hungry. I think it's time for lunch. Ow, that hurt. Okay. There we go. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take the other side of this little pokey tool and kind of just press them down even further. Try and make them as more flat as, as flat as I can. Ooh, I like that, you guys. Isn't that fun? Okay, so as I've been kind of manipulating this, I've kind of been thinking through this inside again. And um, what, what I'm thinking is it's still a little more bendy than I want it to be. So I think what I'll do is take uh, some cardstock and I'm just going to um, put it down on the f each side and then a little bit in the spine um, to kind of give it a little bit more stability. And then I will still put the inside fabric down on top of that. So uh, let me go ahead and try not to make a big huge mess as I pull this out from under a big tower of stuff. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's pull this out. Actually, that might be, I just probably need one. Um, oh my gosh, you guys, this is such a mess. <laughs> and you can tell because it just made another shadow. <laughs> okay. I grab my ruler. See how wide this needs to actually. I'm gonna measure this inside one first. So let's see. I'm thinking three quarters of an inch. Um, this could be five and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna cut off three quarters of an inch first with my trimmer. What am I doing? Okay, I need to go this direction. Move it up so you can see what I'm doing. And what did I say, five and three quarters? How much is left though? Let me just double check. Ten and a quarter, so five and one eighth inch then. Or five and three quarters minus that much. Okay. Oops. And those should be even. Not at all. <laughs> well, hmm. <laughs> Yeah, okay. It'll be okay. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put this down here. Do I want to? I think I do. Sorry, I'm just kind of thinking through what I want to do yet um, with the 
spine part of it. Um, I said I wanted to maybe put the outside fabric down the middle of the spine. And I think I do still want to do that just to give it some differentiation. Um, and then I will be uh, sewing the signatures directly into the spine of this one. So because the cover is not sturdy enough to hold to handle um, a hidden spine, so or hidden stitches. All right, just kind of eyeballing this in the middle. And once this dries, it'll be sturdy enough that it'll be able to handle gluing those signatures in and holding them secure. Okay. Now, let's see what I did here. Is this gonna be too big? Might be. I think I want to cut a little bit off. So how much extra width is this then? Half an inch. Oh, I can never figure out how this works. Okay, so this right here is an inch. So half an inch would be there. Okay. Go ahead and add some glue. I guess I'm gonna run out of glue before I add some acetone to it. <laughs> oh well. This is gonna be another long video, you guys. I guess though, the longer I'm in here doing this, the less time I have to be outside in the hot sun mowing my yard. <laughs> It all works out. <laughs> okay, once again, just gonna kind of eyeball this. This is basically being added for s more stability. So, glue that down. Got a little bit coming out the edge, the edge there. Curving inward, so I'm going to put that to the back side or the inside. Oh my. All right. And you notice I'm not taking the time to smooth all this down. I don't need to do it here because it's not going to show through anywhere. So. There. I think I'm going to like that better. It's going to be more sturdy now. Yeah, I, I think that feels better. Cool. All right. So... Gonna grab this piece here and I want to measure where my ruler go over here I want to measure this so I want my piece of fabric I don't want it to go all the way to either end so I'm just measuring about an eighth of an inch off both ends and so it looks like eight and a half or eight and three quarters um, high is what I need this up off to the side here and I will 
Okay, it has come apart now. I'm gonna line that back up. The width of it doesn't really matter because I'm going to be covering it with the inside fabric anyway. So I just really am more concerned about the height at this point. So I'm just going to line this side up because this is already frayed and looking the way I want it over here. And then I'm going to try and even this out. Let's see. Like so trying to keep it as straight as possible one two three four five six seven eight and three quarters is right there my scissors no I didn't get both sides get my scissors <laughs> and rip this there we go okay now I need to glue those together like we did the first time. I'm going to hold on to this for tabs and other adornments. <laughs> okay. Let me separate these. There we go. I found that if you want to keep things together like this, it's easy to do one, pull one half up, do that half, put it down, and then glue the other half. Okay, lightly adding some glue. I want to get it around the edges so it doesn't lift up there. Okay, that's enough. Oof, this glue is being unruly. And I'm going to smooth it out with my fingers again. mostly kind of paying attention to the outside edges because I don't want in this bottom edge especially because that's where you're gonna see it the most if it fails awesome that looks really good okay now let's do the top Do the exact same thing that we just did. Oh, my glue just farted. <laughs> it's a weird way to glue things, but it'll work. <laughs> And again, I'm going to quickly come back and grab that with my finger. So I don't want it to seep through too much. To the side that we'll see. Again, trying to pay attention up here at the top. So that we make sure that that does not come apart. Line it back up. And glue it down. Perfect. Okay. I'd say that's good. Blew off my finger again. It's always important when, especially when you're working with Fabri-Tac, try and keep your fingers as clean as possible because as soon as you don't, that's when you're going to get glue somewhere that you don't want it to be. <laughs> Trust me, I'm speaking from experience on that one. Okay. So here we have our cover again, and I'm just kind of eyeballing this to be in the center. It doesn't need to be perfect. I just kind of want it to cover, and that's what it's doing, and it's right side up. Okay, so flipping that around, and I'm going to add some glue all the way around the perimeter. Oh boy, this is going to be a pain. All right, and again, I'm trying not to get too heavy handed with the glue um, because this is fabric and wetness will seep through if you're not careful. But I also want to make sure it's stable. I'm not going to go anywhere. 
again, making sure that I'm getting that um, top and bottom well covered because that's where you're going to see um, this particular piece the most. Okay, I need something to hold on to here. <laughs> Work my way in a downward motion. It's okay if I get glue on this stuff because I'm going to be covering this up anyway. Um, but I do want to avoid getting it on the edges of the cover here. Okay, we'll call that good. One the good thing about Fabri-Tac is you have just a second to kind of reposition things if you need it. Okay. Now I need to make sure and put that glue down first. But I need to make sure and um, still have my lines for folding this in. And that is where this Tim Holtz ruler comes in very handy in so many ways. I don't know if you guys have one, but this edge is really kind of sharp right there. And it's perfect for this kind of stuff. Okay. It's bunching a little more than I wanted it to. And just kind of work this with my fingers as much as I can. Keep training this back to the way it was as much as I can. All right. So I think that's about as good as I can do. This is kind of bunching up here down in the middle, but. When I sew in the signatures, that'll that'll be taken care of for the most part there. So now all that's left is I need to cut fabric to cover these two sides. And um, what I wanted to do is probably add some lace to do like little lace pockets down here on the front and the back. Um, and then after that, oh, we got that glued down. <laughs> And then after that, I'm going to run a sewing machine all the way around um, each um, edge on all three of these sides. So give me just a minute and I will be right back. Okay, here I am again. So what I've done is I cut out, this is some upholstery fabric that I had picked up at Joann's. So I cut out uh, two pieces to cover the front and the back side. Um, and then um, just enough fab uh, lace there to create a little pocket um, on the bottom. So what uh, I'm doing now is I'm just making sure that they are the right size and kind of just before I glue anything down, I want to make sure it's going to look good. So um, this is not glued down yet. It's just um, sitting there. So what I like to do is actually when I'm gluing these down is turn the cover this direction um, and then that way it's easier for me to line up both of these edges. Um, and I'm going to get rid of all this stuff, or at least move it out of the way, because I don't want any of that to get glued down accidentally into the wrong place. I've got glue everywhere on my fingers. Alright, so I'm going to add the glue to this, and again, I want to be kind of careful about not getting too much on there. Um, and... I think I might just do half and half on this one. I don't normally do that, but um, actually, no. I think it'll be okay because I'm going to be um, sewing around all the edges anyway. But basically, I need to make sure that I um, have enough glue in the middle here so that we don't have any weird bulging or anything like that. I want it to be secure to the page. Okay. 
you can tell that this is gonna be kind of a problem here. All right, I don't want this to show through. I really don't wanna have to take the pocket off if it does and redo this. <laughs> hands. Ugh, this glue. I love it and hate it at the same time. <laughs> okay, so pulling this close to me. It's obviously easier to do this with paper than with fabric because it doesn't really want to do what I want it to do, but I'm going to try not to glue it to itself. <laughs> Like I just about did there, um, but also line it up as well as I can on all three sides and still get it without any weird bulges or anything like that. Okay, that was, I would say, fairly successful. And it's glued down just enough that it's not going anywhere, but... It also doesn't have any weird bulges or anything or pockets and it's also not showing through so that was a success so let me do the back side now okay Get my glue to cooperate with me here Finding a bead of glue. I don't want it to be too much. Just enough. And then I will smooth it out. With my finger. One more time. Okay. Put the color back on. And very carefully so that it's still sticky but not creating little puddles of glue which I hope we didn't do that oh my gosh look at this <laughs> it's crazy okay now very carefully lining this up. Sorry if you can't see. Put my glue bottle there. Okay. I'm trying to get all three edges to be the equal distant from um, the edge, if at all possible. And I think I've done it. Wow. That worked very much a lot better than I thought it was going to work. So, we got a little bit of stuff happening on the edges, but that's okay. That's kind of what I was going for. Kind of wanted the rustic look. Um, and then our spine is nice and sturdy. I think that looks pretty darn good. All right, so now at this point, what I'm going to do is... Um, so around each, uh, all three, uh, panels and I'm going to call this cover done. All right. I'll be back. Just one minute. Okay, guys, I think I'm done with this. Well, I mean, um, the cover's done. So I don't know how well you can see, but I sewed around the edges of all of this, um, so something that I try to do is, um, it looks like it's messy stitching. Um, that's by design. Uh, <laughs> what I do is I do a really good perimeter stitch. And then the second time around, I'll kind of wobble it through. And then I added some zigzags here and there. And so, um, this thing's pretty darn solid. So at this point, um, all I need to do then is sew in my signatures and, um, oh, I guess 
I'm, I'm gonna add some kind of closure here at the back that'll wrap around and then you just um, tuck it in there. So that's all that's left of this one. And to be honest with you, I really like how this looks. I think I'm gonna do the, I, I think I said I was gonna do the other one differently, but I really love how this turned out. So I think I'll do the other one the exact same way. Um, but yeah, so I'll sew the signatures directly into the spine and um yeah i think it's a pretty darn good looking cover uh or what ooh you know what else i could do is turn this into like a uh, traveler's notebook style maybe that's what i'll do i like that idea even better so i'll create these as their own separate uh, traveler's notebook and sew them on their own and then that way you can use this cover for more than just the fall journal if you want. All right. So that's how things happen in my brain. I just kind of talk through things. Um, so anyway, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, like I said, I'll be uh, posting this little wonderful little book for sale in my Etsy shop very soon. Uh, so keep an eye out for that, and I will see you all again very soon. Have a great rest of your weekend. I'm going to not say that again one more time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, have a great rest of your weekend, and I will see you all. Bye!